Hello everyone. In this session, what we are going to do is exceptional thing for which you need a lot of concentration. And name is parametric form of equation of a line. Now, before we start, you all must revise first what we mean by a parameter. What do you mean by a parameter? Parameter is a variable that remains constant for a given case. You revise, parameter is a variable which remains constant for a given case. It is not perimeter. I hope you understand that. Not perimeter, parameter, right? So we have to write in some parameters form the equation of a line. Now, what I do is, I take two points. One is P, another is Q. Q is a moving point whose coordinates are X and Y. And X1, Y1 is a fixed position, which I may name as P. And inclination is theta. And the distance PQ, I'm writing as R. So there are things involved, XY, X1, Y1, R, and theta. And picture would look something like this. From picture, I'm sure all of you must be knowing how I have written there R cos theta, why I am writing there angle theta, why I am writing x1 and x, y1, y, etc. Everything is known to you. Now some of you may question that why are we learning this one more form? When already a point x1, y1 is known to me, angle theta is known to me, then why, are, why do I go for this form? When you will go for problem solving, then you will understand from problem to problem which form is to be taken, that hold you will get. Right now, I may not be in position to explain because everything would go in terms of X and Y only. So you may not be in position to understand. But in problem solving, you will surely understand that when to use parametric form. So parametric form is important. Though it has been treated very badly by people, I mean very rarely used. But if you know how to use it, then nothing like that. So it's very, you know, like I will not say difficult thing, but it is very peculiar thing. If you understand then you will be able to use it properly. So from picture what I am getting, x minus x1 equal to r cos theta and I am getting y minus y1 equal to r sin theta. I hope everyone is able to understand how do I write x minus x1 and why am I equating it to r cos theta and similarly for the next one, y minus y1 equal to r sin theta. Now you may think it is very simple, we already know this, then where is the parameter here? Parameter is r. As point q changes its position, obviously distance pq will change. For a particular position, it will be a constant thing. That means it is a variable which takes various values, but for a particular position, it will be a fixed quantity. So obviously R is the parameter. So what we are doing is, we are writing X minus X1 equal to R cos theta. We introduce that R, that parameter. And Y minus Y1 equal to R sin theta. Again, R is the parameter. And that is why 1 and 2 together are actually called parametric form of equation of line L. Now, you must pay attention to something that R is a signed distance because position of Q is important, whether it is above P or it is below P on the line. So, obviously, we are expecting since it is coordinate geometry that is R a signed distance? Yes, it is a signed distance. Now, when do we take it as positive and when do we take it as negative? That you will get, you know, to understand when you will start solving problems. But for the time being, you just understand that R is a signed distance. That's all. Now, take one illustration so that you may understand what all I spoke just now. Now, question is, find the equation of a line passing through A, 2, 3 and making an intercept of three units between the lines. Y plus 2X equal to 2 and Y plus 2X equal to 5. Now, when you read this question, there are two, three things which you have to understand y plus 2x equal to 2 and y plus 2x equal to 5. That y plus 2x is same. ax plus by part is same. In the equation ax plus by plus c equal to 0. And minus a upon b was the slope. That means slope of these two lines equal and they are actually parallel lines. If you can notice this much, then you will be in position to draw the picture. y plus 2x equal to 2 I am showing. y plus 2x equal to 5. Point 2,3 I have shown as point a. And a line I have drawn making angle theta with positive x-axis. Now understand one thing. If I know theta, then everything is done. So my entire calculation further would be on theta. Once I know theta, point is known to me. I may be in position to understand how to write equation of the line. Okay. Now, where does that R come from? Now, 
R instead of R now, here we will be writing two things, R1 and R2. AP I am taking as R1 and AQ I am taking as R2. Understand one thing, A is 2,3. We do not know anything about P and Q, what those P and Q are. Okay. So, I am naming AP as R1 and AQ as R2. From the given statement that line has intercept between two parallel lines as three units, I write absolute value of R1 minus R2 equal to 3. Frankly speaking, right now I do not know which one is bigger. R1 is bigger or R2 is bigger. So, I am writing absolute value. Absolute value of R1 minus R2 is 3. Okay. Now, if theta is the inclination, what all other things I can write? I can write coordinates of point P as 2 plus R1 cos theta comma 3 plus R1 sin theta. How do I write that? x equal to x1 plus r cos theta because we had written x minus x1 equal to r cos theta, right? So, x equal to x1 plus r cos theta. Use that and write x coordinate as 2 plus r1 cos theta, y coordinate as 3 plus r1 sin theta for t. Similarly, you can write q also. q would be written as 2 plus r2 cos theta and 3 plus r2 sin theta. Now, where do p and q lie? That also has to be seen. They lie on y plus 2x equal to 2 and y plus 2x equal to 5. And some more thing you can see and that is that R1 and R2 are actually, they will have same sign. Why do I say so? Because they are on the same side of point A. Okay. I am just saying right now they have same sign. Whether negative or positive, we have not yet included. Okay. Fine. Now, we will have to use point P on y plus 2x equal to 5, point Q on line y plus 2x equal to 2 and actually on substitution, from there, after simplification, you will get R1 equal to minus 2 upon sin theta plus 2 cos theta and R2 equal to minus 5 upon sin theta plus 2 cos theta. Now, we will have to decide once for all about R1 and R2 and their signs. Now, we will have to take two different cases. As shown in picture, my theta is acute angle or theta could be pi by 2 maximum, right? Okay. Now, P and Q, they have their x coordinates means abscissa less than 2. You can see there p I have written as 2 plus r1 cos theta and I am saying p's x coordinate is less than 2. So, don't you understand that r1 cos theta will have to be negative. Something will have to be subtracted from 2 to get a quantity which is less than 2. So, r1 cos theta has to be actually negative. What about cos theta? Since theta is acute, cos theta is positive. So, r1 is going to be negative. And similar is with R2 also. R1 and R2, they have same sign. So, R1 and R2 both are negative. And actually, you can write one more statement from there, seeing the picture, that R1 is greater than R2. And hence, my situation is now little simplified. I have absolute value of R1 minus R2 equal to 3, which would be rewritten now as R1 minus R2 equal to 3. Now, no more need of writing absolute value because R1 is greater than R2. Now, substitute expressions of R1 and R2. And simplify it, you will get sin theta plus 2 cos theta equal to 1. Now, this is simple case of solving a trigonometric equation. Now, choice is entirely yours how you solve this equation. We have already done how to solve trigonometric equation. Now, choice is entirely yours. What I do is, I try to write equation in one trigonometric ratio only. And for that, I square. I get a term of cos square theta, suppose. I may write that as 1 minus sin square theta. And get equation only in sin theta throughout. And solve it by normal factorization. You will get one factor as phi sin theta plus 3 and other factor as sin theta minus 1. Now, phi sin theta plus 3 is always positive because your theta is acute. Correct? So, the only choice left is sin theta equal to 1. And that would lead to theta equal to pi by 2. The moment you say theta equal to pi by 2, that means that line must be parallel to y axis. This possibility generally is ruled out if you go by any other standard method. So, one possibility is that line is parallel to y-axis. Now, this is only when I have taken theta acute. There is one more case. Theta could be obtuse also. Then picture would be something like this. Okay. And again, I will have to start from fresh. Theta be obtuse. Absolute value of R1 minus R2 is still 3. But I will have to see which is bigger and which is smaller. Okay. Now, what is the case now? Now, again, P and Q are on the same side of A. But... What about their x coordinates? x coordinates are still smaller than x coordinate of A. But now cos theta is going to be already negative. So R1 will have to be positive. And hence I understand that 
R2 would be greater than R1 now and absolute value of R1 minus R2 equal to 3 would be replaced by R2 minus R1 equal to 3. Now again substitute expressions for R1 and R2 and simplify. Finally you will get equation as sin theta plus 2 cos theta equal to minus 1. But this again immediately doesn't give you theta. You will have to write in one trigonometric ratio square and simplify that further and that would give you phi cos square theta plus 4 cos theta equal to 0. One option could be cos theta equal to 0 which I am rejecting because theta equal to pi by 2 we have already taken in the first case. And second option is nothing but phi cos theta plus 4 equal to 0 that leads to cos theta equal to minus 4 by 5. And that would give me tan theta as the slope and that is minus 3 by 4. Now slope is known to me, point is already known to me. So I can write equation of the line as 3x plus 4y minus 18 equal to 0. And the other case was line parallel to y axis that leads to x equal to 2 because line passing through a which is 2 comma 3 and parallel to y axis has to be given as x equal to 2. So there are two possible equations of the line which satisfy the given condition. I think this is enough for the parametric form. Now let us start with a new thing. Equation of family of lines passing through point of intersection of two given lines. Statement looks quite bigger. I mean the title looks quite bigger but picture is not all that bad. I am showing here L1 and L2, two lines passing through point 2. And I am saying family of lines, means there are other dotted lines, which are all the members of that family, okay, which all pass through point of intersection of L1 and L2. Now, am I in position to write equation of family of lines? Now, if first line L1 is A1x plus B1y plus C1 equal to 0, and other line is A2x plus B2y plus C2 equal to 0, then what would be equation of family of lines and that family of lines is given by L1 plus lambda L2 equal to 0 and that would give me finally nothing but A1x plus B1y plus C1 plus lambda times A2x plus B2y plus C2 equal to 0. Now what is lambda? It's an arbitrary constant. More information would be given in the problem which would help you to evaluate lambda. And finally, I will be collecting terms of x at one place, terms of y at one place and a constant. So final equation would be of, again of the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0. So it would be a lines equation. So all the members of that family are going to be nothing but lines. And since a1x plus b1y plus c1 would be 0 when I substitute that point p and similarly the other one. So I understand that all the lines will surely pass through the point P also. So this should be the final form of equation of family of lines. That A1 plus lambda A2 times X plus similarly term of Y plus constant equal to 0. That would be the final form. Now here I end my this session. Next time when we come, we come again with something new. Hope you enjoyed the session. If you have liked the video, please click to subscribe on this side. And if you want to place the order for the book, please click on this side. Thank you.